Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent, annual Amazon, Amazon Web Services annual user conference. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're here up in the press area where are other stages. We also have a stage down in the MongoDB Emerald Lounge, which is Sugarcane, calling it the, the Sugar Cube. We got a cube down there. <laughs> just interviewed the top execs at Mongo, people in the industry, all the, the legends. Here I have a special guest, Shelly Crane, who just joined our team, the Cube Research and Advisory, formerly Wikibon, was our analyst arm for many, many years, over a decade. Uh, she's managing director and lead analyst, um, entrepreneurial in high integrity, high intelligence. <laughs> Thanks for joining our team. Psyched to have you on board. Absolutely, I'm psyched too. You know, one of the things I want to just kind of put up front is, is that you, know, you have such high integrity, your reputation uh, is very strong in the industry. You do great work. Um, you founded companies and just your track record and your body of work has been phenomenal. So we're super happy to have you on the team and looking forward to creating some new research products and reinventing the whole AR concept and providing a great service and backing it up. Yeah, I think, you know, I think that what we know that we're good at is disruption and disrupting ourselves and disrupting a tired AR model and all of that sort yeah. of thing. I think that's really exciting. And so we're looking forward to that. You know, I find uh, uh, the AR industry, having worked with Dave Vellante, who's a legend in the industry, helped build yeah. IDC up from scratch with McGovern, so he knows his thing about research. You know, I came from Silicon Angle, the podcasting background, search, and kind of a techie. And I've worked with all the top AR departments in this industry for years, and it's been a great evolution. Great people, they're relationship oriented, reputation matters, and service matters, but it's changing. And he's seeing a lot more um, power shift between PR and ARs, depending on which company you're in. Right. And, and a lot of companies are moving into the analyst relations to take on financial industry right. and kind of influencers, and a new category of influencer analysts, ones that do a lot of selfies, get in the front row in the keynotes, you know, they're more influential, but right. still have impact. They're not doing research, and you have the hardcore research, and you get the financial, but it's, so it's, the, ch the game has changed a lot, and, and now you throw in AI, a lot more vanilla content coming out with AI, seeing you know, people sort of thing on the web that says, you know, search is being manipulated by AI, so right. you're starting to see the organic market turning to reputation, not so much influence, because that influence game is changing. Right. I mean, I just find it fascinating. And then the companies are realizing, okay, I can't hit everybody, because someone might be an expert in storage, like Sanjeev right. Mohan, who's like a legend, but he might not get invited to the big events because he's just storage. Right. So it's, it's, it's a hard, nut to crack. It is a hard nut to crack, and I think you know you also, uh, you mentioned AR, you mentioned PR, there's also marketing, and there's also the event team, so really as yeah. analysts, you know, we work, we're used to working across all of those areas within a company, and you know, being able to help yeah. them in a variety of ways. Um, a, a colleague, and I am not going to be able to remember his company, um, Duncan Chappelle, um, does a lot in the AR space, and um, one of the bits of research that they put out was that um, people trust analysts more than they trust your marketing materials. They, uh, I mean, of course, you know, and so we were having this conversation yesterday, and the thing about being an analyst is that, you know, it's not a pay to play. You're not paying us to say good things about you. What you're paying us for is our insights, our ability yeah. to guide and help you reach your goals, and I think that's really an important yeah. part of the equation today. Yeah, it certainly is in an era where there's high velocity content, a lot of data, in content. Yeah, um, telling stories, better making stories. Making sense of the results. Yeah. And that's why I'm excited by having theCUBE and SiliconAngle.com and theCUBE and CUBE Research and Advisory, formerly Wikibon, together because we can integrate them but yet have them be cohesive on their own, but the data between them right. is shared and there's benefits on each one that contribute to the other. So I find right. it to be an exciting opportunity. And, and I wanted to ask you um, what you see as the vision that you see us doing. Share with the folks your, your um, plans, what you're thinking, yeah. yeah. Well, and what you're going to be covering. Yeah, absolutely. So part of, I think, what I'm excited about bringing to the team is that many of my focus areas are areas that aren't typically things that you're focusing on, right? And so whether that's CX and all the things that fall under that bucket, collab, contact center, CRM, employee experience, all of those things, the whole future of work space. Um, anything having to do with security. We have so many clients in the security space, Cisco, Dell, IBM, 
AWS, right? I mean, you know, that's a huge space. And not that we don't already cover security, but there's so much more to security, AI security, all of that sort of thing, I think that we're going to be able to delve into. Uh, who's not covering AI, right? Mm -hmm. My ex expertise is deep in the automation space and all of that, and that sector is evolving yeah. as we've got, you know, the advent of Gen AI and all of that sort of thing. So that's kind of a little, yeah. a, a yeah. little sneak preview. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we have in the works that I'm really excited about is, and then, and I know that you know this, but. We're really passionate about working with the analyst community and we feel like our peers in this space are brilliant. And so being able to collaborate with them, to lift up their thinking and their insights and, and we're rolling out, we're still developing it, but we're rolling out a, a platform called the Cube Collective. And so you'll see that, I just did a, a webcast with George Gilbert as part of this uh, Cube Collective effort. This new show is focusing on the rise of the intelligent data platform, which is George's area of expertise and, and all of that sort of thing. We're going to be rolling out a webcast focused on cybersecurity. We're going to be rolling out a webcast focused on 5G. So all kinds of exciting things in the work that you're going to see. That's awesome, and I love that. I love the collective. I love the collaboration because we bring great people together that have high awesome. integrity and respect for each other and good reputation. Yeah. Magic happens, and we, I think that's so important. And you know what it all does? Serve your customers yeah, better. Yeah. And that, I think that's what, yeah. um, I was having a meeting yesterday with someone here at the event, and, and they were griping about sort of the traditional AR model that everybody's really tired of, but you know, there's a few vendors out there that everybody groans. Yeah when it comes to the thought of working with them. Yeah. And they call this, you know, the tax that we yeah. have to pay. And there's got to be a better way, and we know yeah. there's a yeah. better yeah. way. Yeah. And, so and I, think, I think, you know, I, I love to hear some of the anecdotes from happy customers, and when people get it right, it's fun to see yeah. and celebrate those great days. And one of the comments I heard was, love working with you guys, love analysts that help us cross the bridge to the future. Yeah. And that is really more of a trusted advisory yeah. role where, you know, they want to count on you. And, and I think, you know, 13 years of doing theCUBE um, and here at reInvent, 11 years, you know, we have relationships, we get to know people, watch the progress. We can be critical, and we are. Yeah, um, but, but that's not, our job. That's our job is to get the data. <laughs> and I love theCUBE <laughs> because we get the data from the guests. So, yeah. so super exciting. And again, this show, to me, encapsulates the industry. Because, you know, you heard Adam Selesky up on stage uh, here saying, you know, and because Amazon's getting pounded, are they, are they are they old guard? Are they old hat? Are they going to cross they're to the behind, future? Are they behind you know, as it relates to AI? And when you're around and you're the incumbent, you know, believe me, we know with that with the cube. Yeah. The question is, here's who we are. He said, we are always reinventing, and and the cube has a lot of DNA from the Amazon culture and 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 meetings with a similar mindset, which is, if you're not reinventing yourself, disrupting the market and yourself, and being uh, aware of where you are. We've been doing this for 13 years. I mean, we've seen our, us go through inflection points, and I think that speaks volumes because the speed of change, and our customers <laughs> are asking us to say, I'm going to ride with you guys. I'm, yeah. I'm going to sit in the front row with you as we have a front row seat uh, to the industry, and we do, and we've had for years. Yeah. They're in with us. Yeah. It's not just us having a front row seat. We're with the customer. Yeah. And to me, that's, I love that about my job, and I think Amazon here is in the same boat, and they, they established themselves and said, okay, we're a little quirky company, we do things our way, but one thing that's consistent, we work back from the customer and we're going to reinvent ourselves. And then they laid out the new Gen AI stuff. So I thought, yeah. I thought that was a compelling way to kind of address the elephant in the room, which was all the pundits were saying, oh, they don't have AI, Microsoft's beating them. I mean, Microsoft's not beating. Amazon. Yeah. I mean, it's like. I mean, this is such the early days. They're anyway, catching up for sure. Ridiculous. No doubt yeah. about that. But and they're making some good moves with OpenAI, which I've been been, been very um, pleased with. But there's no way they're ahead because yeah. Copilot is integrated into Microsoft's products, but they just rolled out more infrastructure. And if that stuff hits that they announced yeah. today. But you know what, you John, you can roll out all the crap you want to roll out but the real magic is in the adoption. And what all the data is showing right now is that especially at the enterprise level, the adoption rate is really slow. So yeah. nobody's really behind, yeah. you know? Especially, you know, part of the, um, the report that we put out right before the event on AI, and I'll share a link to that in the show notes, but you know, part of the, the data that we've seen is showing that enterprise adoption is fairly, fairly slow, where we're seeing adoption is with the younger startup with that 
mentality, and it's really the mentality that we have, you know, move fast, break stuff, figure it out, fix it as you go along, <laughs> yeah. you know, good is the enemy of perfect, or perfect is the enemy of good, however, whatever that saying is. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I, I just think that there are so, m so many yeah. things to be excited about ahead, and they're, you know, open AI may, do may dominate conversations, yeah. but, they're yeah. not the only player yeah, in this we space. Did, we, just, we were just down the sugar cane where Mongo has our, uh, an event, we have a set down there. Uh, David Chier, the CEO, we were talking, um, and what's interesting, you got two factors going on that I think are relevant to the market right now. The developer-led model where developers are going to be in charge as automation hits and more developers yeah. are going to be encoding AI. Then you're going to have cost and price performance um, conversation. So I think, to me, if I had to put the world into two buckets right now, it's developers who are going to basically still be in charge and drive a lot of the agenda, and then the infrastructure performances where there's hard costs involved. If you yep. don't get the energy equation right, you're going to get blown out on costs. Yep. If you don't get the performance right that's, that's tailored to the model, you're going to have some performance concerns. So there's going to be a real battle of this, of this for supremacy around AI in, the, in those areas. Are the developers coding in line? Is it legit code? Is it trusted? Can it be verified? Right. Um, is it helping them do their job better? And I think MongoDB's approach is, was awesome because they're saying, hey, that's our TAM, developers. Yeah. We're not a data company, an analyst. We're just, we have databases, we have a platform called Atlas. I think that's a smart play. And uh, I think Amazon's trying to do the same thing with saying, we're the best cloud. Mm -hmm. We're the super cloud. We got the best chips, the infrastructure layer, we the best models and choice with security built in from day one, and Which enabling. Which is a big factor. Huge factor. Huge factor, and that's something that's glossed over by so many other providers, and that is one of my most favorite things about what it is AWS is doing. He took a ding on um, Microsoft when he said, I would never imagine rolling out something that didn't have security. That's a direct shot Absolutely. at Microsoft. Yeah, and I mean, he, it should be a foundational thing, period. And then he put up jo Jordan Novlet's CNBC article on stage, and they actually blurred out his name, I was just tweeting with him on, online, blurred out his name and company. So, I like how he's p not pulling any punches, finally addressing the elephant in the room, which is OpenAI and Anthropic versus OpenAI, and then their investment in it, so the, that's the battle of titans. I mean, yeah. you've got Google, got the Sphere, you know, it's a big story here in Vegas for the folks who, have been, who aren't <laughs> here, is that Google just bought out the advertising for that new sphere, which is this huge monster, this beautiful thing, and, and, and Amazon missed it. So like basically on their show here in Vegas, they're dominating the Google ad. It's kind of, a, it's a middle finger for <laughs> AWS for sure. Uh, someone at AWS missed that, and they're going to probably be, and be in the what? principal's office Perhaps tomorrow. Perhaps to whoever, was, whoever did this at Google Cloud, because it was a brilliant move. It was. I mean, it was. So let's back up just a little bit, and I know you had an exclusive interview yeah. pre-show with Adam Silipsky. Talk a little bit, if you would, about just some of the highlights of that conversation. I know you talked about chips, I know you talked a little bit about Anthropic, but what, what were the you know, high level takeaways from that conversation? You know, I wrote, I think, 2,000 word post, I did the companion cheat sheet post, kind of summarize it, but uh, pretty much, he didn't reveal anything, but I kind of put the keynote together based on the conversation flow. Yeah. Um, and so essentially, pretty much nailed the keynote. But it was more, there was a lot of wide range in conversations in that one was, we the bit, their core business is still being upgraded. Graviton 4, right. fourth generation. So traditional non-Gen Gen AI workloads are going to be worked on. Can't forget that's still a lot of non-Gen AI workouts out there. And then the second one was the role of silicon, yeah. right? The role of silicon chips, custom chips, custom chip development, and then, I had no idea NVIDIA was going to come straight, but I brought up NVIDIA and I called the GPU conundrum, which was we just came back from supercomputing and I asked them directly, DGX Cloud is addressing this new sub-market developing. It's kind of super cloud-like, where people are going to stand up GPU clusters yep. and enable kind of these secondary GPU AI clouds, right. which well, we're already seeing. Well, because there's a huge challenge in being able to get the GPU com computing power to run your AI needs, you know, yeah. your Gen AI stuff. And it's you a got, big deal. And you got companies doing it now, CoreWeave yep. and a bunch of other ones, they're becoming uh, AI as a service clouds. Yep. That's a direct strike at, uh, up at Amazon. And he addressed that by saying, it's not about just the chips, and, and uh, he nailed that in the keynote here, yep. um, that it's about the networking and stuff, and he actually rolled out specifics on that, so that was a nice gem there. But other things that was interesting is that, that didn't make the story was, I brought up the comparison to the World Wide Web, and he was animated and he said, who, who own, who's, who's the internet company? And I said, I actually think someone did try to claim it once, but no one owns the internet. Right. No one owns AI conceptually. Right. Developers will build apps, and his point was, 
there was no one model to rule the world. And I said, well, you had AOL as an online service provider. Right. That was proprietary. That was not the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web was DNS, HTML, HTTP, content on top of standards right. that made everything successful. The online service providers, CompuServe, AOL, went out of business. So we kind of were riffing on the concept of who's the AOL for AI? Now, OpenAI has been criticized as being closed AI in Twitter, and you go on the, in the, in the th thoughts leader cir circles, you have the open source community saying, they're not open. And then you right. got Hugging Face, Clem at Hugging Face, Cube alumni, really, really vocal around open will win. Right. So you, you're, gonna see, you're already seeing it now. This, this, it's very similar to the web, Shelley. You remember those days. I do. Online <laughs> service providers, you dial up and you're in a proprietary platform yep. with content service providers. Yep. Those content service providers all went to the web. So I think we're in an interesting mode. I think Slepsky got it right with this idea of the power law. He validated our power law research that we put out, um, and he actually weaved that into the keynote. So congratulations to your, the research team. You guys did good work there, and he recognized that. So I think you know, our work has contributed to his keynote, which I was a private awesome. victory for us, but <laughs> you, can see, you can see that in there. And um, he's, he wants to fight. He's, he, he, I think he was, the, he didn't say this, but I think he's like, proud Amazonian like Andy Jass, he's like, I'm not going to let people say we don't have AI. Yeah. And so this event, he kind of flexed. Yeah, uh, no, well, and I, I mean, he needed to though. <laughs> You yeah. know, I think that uh, he needed to, and, and I, I enjoyed the conversation with um, Dario Amodi, who, who was part of the keynote this morning. He's the co-founder and CEO of Anthropic. And one of the things that he said toward the end of his conversation was, you know, he looks at this as a race to the top, you know? And I feel like that is, is really important because, and, and what I like about Amazon and others' approach to Gen AI in particular, is I believe a federated approach is the most customer-centric way to go. Instead of all your apples in an open AI bucket, um, being able to work with different providers, a family of providers, I mean, that's always going to be mm -hmm. a better solution. And, and you, get the, you get the benefit of all the innovation. And you know, again, we were talking yeah. about the Cube Collective, you know, a collection of brilliant minds yeah. makes your findings even better, right? Yeah. And I think the, a federated approach to AI is similar to that. And so, so I thought that was cool. Um, Dario also just kind of talked briefly about some of their the sectors they're focusing on, the biomedical space, you know, the story about Pfizer and you know, the results they were able to reap for Pfizer, the legal space where they're working with um, a deployment through LexisNexis, the finance industry where they've got to deal with Bridgewater to develop an, in, uh, an investment analyst assistant. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. no sector that's not going to, already being <laughs> or going to be touched by Gen AI, and I think that's really exciting. Well, I'm super excited to have you on the team. I got a lot of great messages yesterday. Great. You posted on LinkedIn, like it was awesome, and uh, a lot of people are super excited um, for the, the work we're going to do, and it's great I'm to excited. have you, and, and we're here. Again, we love reInvent, what we do. We, we go to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we got silicon angle, tsunami of content, we got a big special reports there, we got news, analysis, research, commentary, all there at siliconangle.com. The Cube, obviously here on the ground, in studio in Palo Alto, and the Cube research team on the ground, getting all the data, collecting it in, and providing insights, and the, the full machine is here. Team coverage of reInvent is here. We're up in the press area, this is where one of our stages is, the other stage is down in MongoDB uh, special event. Bringing you coverage back to everyone in the studio in Palo Alto. We'll be right back here on location after this short break. <laughs>